Hi everyone, Charles here for MLU Papers. How are you doing? I hope you could enjoy the summer, or at least that you could work a little less like I did, hence the lack of videos in August. <clears throat> I also talked to a couple of friends on Zoom who, like me, are in a PhD, and interestingly enough, most of them told me the exact same thing. I feel like I do nothing most of the time. Now remember I said that too at some point. Maybe it was or still is your case too? But what does that mean? Does it mean you do nothing? And most importantly, how do we alter the curse? Now let's see that in details, but before that, I have an announcement to make. A huge video is coming next Monday. I have interviewed a mega rock star in machine learning. Like in machine learning research, literally everyone on earth knows him. He's a researcher at Google DeepMind, professor in the top university in the UK, and most importantly, he has shaped the field of machine learning to what it is today, with massive contributions in kernel methods and statistical tests, to only name a few. So if you don't want to miss out, you should definitely subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of a video when it is released. That's completely free for you, and that really helps the channel. Thank you so much. Let's jump in. Really? Nothing? First, you don't do nothing. You may do little, but it's not nothing. And before trying to solve a non-existent problem, do you really do only little? I'm not gonna dive into the imposter syndrome, but this is really a thing. Maybe you're doing amazing and you're just too hard on yourself because you couldn't prove Riemann's hypothesis and build a billion dollar company last week. First thing first, we need to evaluate how much we produce. Now, this is a tip that I've given to my friends who asked me. Take a little notebook and note down what you do every single working day. Don't get into the details, just make a short list. Here's an example. Monday, I wrote one section of my thesis, five pages. Tuesday, I tried to prove theorem big super, but I couldn't. I should use more of the geometric property, blah, blah, blah. Wednesday, I tried a geometric approach to prove theorem big super, but I encountered a problematic case. Thursday, I programmed and tested my algorithm in the problematic case, and it seems to work, and so on. I think it is a good habit to keep during studies or even work, and sometimes, if you feel that you're not doing enough, step back and look at it. How much did you produce? Is that enough? Not enough? You may think that what you're doing right now is not going to take you where you want, but productivity increases with experience. So it might just be better than what you think. A lack of productivity? Yet if you're still unsatisfied with your outcome, then you should take action. Not trying to push formulas everywhere, but your production is the product of your work time and your productivity. But contrary to what most people think, those are not independent. They are even largely correlated. More often than not, if your productivity decreases, you will lose your self-esteem and motivation, and you will decrease the number of hours you put as well. So what is the root cause of that decrease? There are many possible causes. I've been there too, and some of my friends have been there too, and we talked about it. So I can tell you some of the common issues and how we solve them. In some cases though, there can be mental health problems. Whether they're mild or severe, mental health problems should be taken seriously and they may require the assistance from a health professional. So do not hes hesitate to consult with one or several of them until you find the right one. Overwork and lack of sleep. One common issue for PhD students and young professionals alike is overwork. I hear stories of people who work like crazy at night, during weekends and public holidays or worse. Now, how much work you can pull out is totally up to you because we're all different. But come on, you should at least take one day off every week, if not two. This is both for your productivity and your health. Talking about health, it is not healthy for most humans to sleep less than seven hours per night, increasing the risk of cardiovascular diseases, weakening your immune system, and damaging your mental health, among many other things. Now for information, the longest a human can survive without sleep is about 10 days, and it is 20 days without eating. So put down that peanut butter and chocolate bar and go to sleep for 15 minutes. But at the end of this video, I gotta increase the watch time. <laughs> now, there are exceptional cases when you may need to work the whole night or the weekend. Deadlines of presentations, conferences, product releases, and so on. It's fine if those are exceptional. And no, every month is not exceptional. Organization. Point number two, organization. I know sometimes we work on something and we decide to stay on that same project until we solve it, whether it is the proof of a theorem, conducting an experiment, writing a draft, or what have you. In my personal case, that works around 10% of the time, if I'm optimistic. For the remaining 90%, I just get stuck and end up losing motivation. So instead, what I recommend and what worked for me was to set a schedule. Now, I'm not a schedule guy who has pre-programmed every single minute of his life, 
But I have a rough idea what I do and when I do it. For example, my typical weekday looks like that. In the morning, I write my thesis. Then I take a lunch break. In the afternoon, I do research or read a research paper with a break in the middle. And in the evening, I work on my YouTube videos. This is not razor sharp accurate, but at every time of the day, I know what to do. So I don't waste energy thinking about what to do and I don't waste a whole day in the same problem. Now you're gonna tell me, but Charles, if you have a problem and you don't solve it, isn't that same problem still there tomorrow? Well, surprisingly, most of the time, what you see as a problem today isn't going to be one tomorrow. But if it is, I recommend the next step. Collaborate. I have noticed that many of my lab mates are sometimes stuck in a problem. Being stuck is normal, it happens to everyone. Well, everyone who actually tries to solve a problem, but then they just remain stuck. Now, don't get me wrong. It is important to spend some time thinking about your problem and trying to find a solution. This is how you improve. And yes, research involves getting stuck on some problems for a couple of hours without moving on and then trying new approaches to that problem. But if you run out of new approaches, unless your problem is to level up a Pokemon that you left at daycare, it is not going to solve itself, so you'd better ask for help. Now I know that sometimes it may be uncomfortable to ask for help, but let me tell you one thing. There is nothing wrong asking anyone for help. It does not mean that you're not capable of solving the problem. It simply means that you want to join forces with someone else to solve it. Maybe you want to save time and solve the problem faster. Maybe you're working several things at a time. Or maybe you just think that it's more fun to work in a team and rightfully so. Remember, if you watch Amy Jung's video up there or Eugene Vinitsky's interview in my RLC video, both links in the description, they both said that research is a very social activity with lots of teamwork and collaborations. And I dare to think that many activities in life fall in that category. In any case, if you are doing research, I think that contacting other people with similar interests and starting a project together is a wonderful idea. Even if their interests are different, it could also be the opportunity to learn a new topic and broaden your expertise. That's just my take, but I don't think the project itself matters that much anyway. I think it's all about people and joining forces with the right people. And the right people are those who make you feel happy and recognize your value. Before concluding the video, there is one thing I want to say. Don't feel guilty about what you do. Sometimes we feel that we are not efficient enough or even that we don't work long enough. And sometimes that may even be true. But as a mathematician and statistician, I believe there are reasons why things happen. If you don't work long enough, there are reasons for that. And most likely other people in your situation would do the same. So don't feel bad about it. Just identify the cause of a problem, solve it, and everything will be fine. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. I would really appreciate that. Also, if you have any tips to get out of the I do nothing vicious circle, please share them in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget next Monday's video, we will receive a famous researcher right here in Emily Papers. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.